The objective of this lesson is to draw two diagrams that represent the behavior of water waves moving from deep to shallow water and shallow to deep water. The change in direction is caused by refraction. The term refraction is referred when a wave changes direction. Let's start by understanding what is refraction. Refraction is the change in direction of propagation of any wave as a result of its traveling at different materials or even through same material but with different speed. This pencil immersed in water is an example to illustrate refraction. The light move, the light wave is moving through two different materials, air and water, giving the appearance the pencil is bent. Let's use water waves to illustrate the refraction of a wave when it's traveling through the same material. Here we have a pool with two different water levels. This section is the deep water and this section is the shallow water. So we are going to create a wave on the surface of the deep water. It is traveling in this direction. Notice that the water waves travel through the same medium, in this case water. What should be we should be expecting on the other side, on the shallow water area? The waves on the shallow surface are compressed. This occurs because the frequency of both waves are the same. The water waves slow down in shallow water and the distance between crests are smaller. Now, what about if the water is moving from shallow to deep water? We are going to generate a wave on the shallow water and observe how it's going to behave on deep water. The water waves move faster in deep water and the distance between crests are larger because they remain the same frequency. So how to graphically illustrate this diagram to predict the bending of water as moving from different levels? We are going to use some tools in order to draw all this diagram. First, let's represent waves by wavefront. So this is a single wave traveling in this direction. The problem is waves, they are not single. They travel in groups. When this group is synchronized, we can draw a line on the crests and they all be connect together. We have learned on previous lessons the distance between two consecutive crests is the wavelength. So this is the wavefront, the red lines, and these are the waves traveling. Now let's remove the waves from this diagram. Now let's shift these red lines, which is the wave front, like this. So now we have a vertical view of the wave front. So we are going to preserve the distance between crests, which is the wavelength. And we are going to draw an arrow to indicate the direction the wave is moving. This arrow is perpendicular to the wavefront. And also this arrow represents the wavefront. Okay, so that's the sequence how, how an arrow or ray is going to represent a wave. 
So keep in mind the red lines are the crests of the wave. So we started from a sequence of waves, the wave front, we straight shifted the wave front, and then we draw an arrow that is perpendicular to the wave front. So now we are ready to draw the diagram of the water waves when it's moving from shallow water to deep water. The deep water section is represented by this blue rectangle. We are using this acronym RNRA to give us the sequence at which we are going to draw this diagram. So let's start with the incident ray. So the incident ray is perpendicular to the wave front. Now we need to identify the boundary, which is where it's going to make the transition between the shallow to deep water. Now we are going to draw the normal line, which is perpendicular to that boundary. Make 90 degrees with the boundary. Now we have to define our refracted ray. So the water moves faster in deep water. So what that means is that the refracted ray is going to be away from the normal line because the water wave is moving faster, like this. Now we are going to extend those lines from the wave front. Somehow that is going to make a 90 degree angle with the refracted ray, like this. Now we are going to extend all the lines of the wave front that is coming in contact with the deep water parallel to that reference line right here. This one, this, and this. Notice that we didn't do this one because it's not touching the deep water section yet. Okay, so now we are going to identify the angle. So there actually are two. One is the incident angle, which is the angle between the incident ray and the normal line. And we have the second angle is between the normal line and the refracted ray, which is the angle of refraction. Now we need to notice a couple of things. Number one is the wavelength. The wavelength for the wave front that is coming before uh, hit the deep water section is, is smaller than this wave front, which means that the wave the wavelength increase and the speed of the wave also increase because in deeper water the water wave moves faster and the frequency remains the same. So the wavelength and the speed of the this wave increase have changed but the frequency remains the same. So now let's draw the diagram for the wave, water waves moving from deep water to shallow water, following the same acronym sequence. So uh, we are going to start with R, the incident ray, which is perpendicular to the wave front. Identify the boundary line and draw the normal line by the tip of the arrow. Make sure that it makes 90 degrees with the boundary line. Now we need to define the refracted ray. The refracted ray is going to be away or towards the normal because the water is moving slower on shallow water. So the refracted ray is going to be toward the normal, uh, towards the normal line, like this. Now, one thing here, if you didn't have a shallow water section, this incident ray will go straight, but it's going to bend because we have an area with a different water level. 
Okay, so now we are going to extend the lines from the wave front somehow that is going to make a 90 degrees with the refracted ray, like this. And we are going to draw, extend the other lines that is going to be parallel to this reference line, like this, this, and this. Now let's observe what happened to the wavelength. The wavelength for this wave front is greater than the wavelength of the wave front that is in the shallow water. So that is a decrease of the wavelength, decrease of the speed, and the frequency remains the same. Okay, so now the last one is the angle. So the angle um, between the incident ray and the normal line is called the angle of incidence and the angle between the refracted ray and the normal line is the angle of refraction. So one more time, the wavelength and the speed of the wave change, both decrease, and the frequency remains the same. In summary, how to draw a ray diagram to represent the refraction of water when it's moving from different water levels. Follow this acronym sequence, RNRA, and uh, complete your diagram. Is is recommended to draw the boundary line first. So R is for incident ray. So draw an incident ray perpendicular to the wave front up to the boundary line. N is the normal line. So draw a normal line which is perpendicular to the boundary line and by the incident ray arrow. R is for refracted ray. Draw a refracted ray away from the normal line if the water wave moves faster or toward the normal line if the water wave slows down. Start by extending one existing wave front line make it perpendicular to the refracted ray, refracted ray, then extend the other lines. A is for angle. Identify the angles of incidence and refracted between each ray and the normal line. So this is all for today. Thanks for watching and complete your assignment.